Hello, everyone. My name is Anna Vidinius. I am a chief of staff at the MariaDB Foundation, and today I would like to share with you some of my experiences from last year on how to organize online events in the new normal. But first about the MariaDB Foundation. We are a very small non-profit organization with 10 employees, focusing, among other things, on all the matters related to adoption of the MariaDB server and actively working with the MariaDB community. In the past twice a year, we would organize uh, unconferences, a small free-spirited event mostly oriented towards the developers of the MariaDB server and consisting of some presentations and also of sp some spontaneous joint coding sessions between the developers. It would usually attract about uh, 50 or so persons and it was all nice and cozy. And then 2020 happened and everything changed. So yes, 2020 has been a year like no other for all of us. Many changes, many challenges, many things to adjust to both in every li day life and at work. Personally, I have worked from home for the past 20 years and so did most of my colleagues. So at least during uh, spring 2020, that part seemed to be quite easy. We all would say, uh, looking at the new rules, oh, well, I work from home anyway, how different it can, it can be now. Turns out it's very different for quite many of us. Some of us, for instance, faced huge challenges in uh, everyday life with the family. Kids are suddenly home, partner at home, and so on. Uh, social life obviously has changed too. In fact, uh, I have heard from uh, many of my colleagues, and I also noticed myself, that until these uh, drastic changes of 2020 happened, Many of us who worked from home didn't even fully realize the huge importance of the social interactions we had with our colleagues during the uh, occasional company meetings and conferences that we would attend a few times a year. We kind of knew it, but it turned out one of those things that uh, you really need to uh, lose to begin properly cherish. And obviously, all those who used to, to work in the office uh, had a huge adjustment as well. Everyone kind of also knew that it takes more than uh, cleaning up a table and plugging a laptop. But again, it turned out to be one of those uh, things one need, need to experience to really understand what's the level of challenges there. And uh, speaking of challenges, it was around maybe March, April 2020 when we began to realize that uh, all tickets we bought for this year need to be uh, uh, unbooked and uh, uh, hotels cancel as well and no trips and no events are happening for real. And then uh, the idea of uh, organizing online events um, began springing simultaneously in quite uh, many minds. The idea seemed very clear and um, obvious from start. We are working from home, as usual. Other people in our community working from home, also as usual, always unusual, but still they are there and should be able to um, watch online events from the sofas uh, to keep learning and interacting and so on. So we can save time on travel, we can avoid jet lag, we can save a lot of costs for hotel, flight, food, and generally minimize our carbon prints that way. So, all great, what's not to laugh, let's do it. Uh, then we started thinking deeper and deeper on what is it we actually have a chance to achieve. First realization we had was that uh, the new normal provides us with the possibility to expand our audience. Uh, I said previously we worked mostly with the developers of the MariaDB server, people who actually contribute into the code of MariaDB. But now we realize that we have a chance to uh, reach out to users of the MariaDB. It was not entirely new audience for us, but still we quickly realized that it meant several new things to consider. Once we realized that we have a chance to reach out uh, to a wider audience, we also decided to bring a touch of formality to the event. We created actual proper call for papers, uh, selected um, a selection committee and so on. That maybe sounds normal for the experienced uh, organizers um, of the uh, physical events. But with our unconference background, it was something new and we immediately saw the advantages of this. Uh, working with presenters uh, in such a way from start helped us uh, to give the whole event the structure it needed. At some point uh, early in the organizing process, I had this uh, interesting moment of uh, uh, clarity when I was looking at one of the MariaDB mailing lists. Uh, there was some 2,000 or so per persons there, and uh, I was thinking, I think I know everyone there. Uh, that line of thinking brought a realization that uh, now we have a chance to reach out of the bubble and to a um, uh, much wider audience. And uh, having a formal process uh, of work with the presenters was uh, invaluable for that, uh, because we had all the abstracts and information about the, pre about the presentation available from the start. Uh, we had a possibility uh, to consider who might be interested in the presentation, whom to contact with this information, how to um, uh, tag event on social media, and so on. 
And so having these thoughts as our starting point, we came to the most crucial part of the initial planning, uh, remembering our own experiences as either presenters or attendees of the events and thinking what is that we wished uh, organizers would do for us and what is it we want from the perfect event. So let's consider the perfect event from different angles. And first, the presenter's point of view. Uh, we all know how it works in real life. You come to the scene, you plug your laptop, turn to the audience, begin speaking. In the beginning, you are horribly nervous, but uh, then probably you would be uh, finding some uh, footing uh, as you keep um, uh, communicating with the audience uh, and uh, things getting better and better. People start asking you questions. Then you're really having fun. Discussion continues in the corridor. You go for a few beer, beers with your new contacts. And that's what everyone uh, loves about uh, physical events. But now we have corona times uh, and that all effectively is gone. You present in front of the cold eye of the camera. There is no re reaction from the audience, no laughter to your jokes, no rotten tomatoes if you make mistakes, and um, no, especially no chemistry or energy exchange with the audience, which is really important. So basically it's easy to lose motivation and start thinking, why bother? And uh, the only answer is... Um, Uh, finding a way to improve interactivity despite all these challenges. And I will tell you in a moment how we approached uh, this uh, challenge of uh, uh, minimizing um, uh, the lack of interactivity in the online event. And uh, spoiler alert, our message really works. But uh, first, uh, let's look at the other side. Uh, what is that uh, attendees worked, uh, want in the uh, presentation? So why do people attend a conference, in particular an online one? Uh, obviously to learn something new. So the first important task would be to make sure they can easily identify interesting for some presentations and navigate through them easily. And this is all the early work uh, with the presenters come so invaluable at. And having a good uh, schedule and all the information available in advance is really important. Well, it's actually the same in any physical event. But then when the event is online and you know how you can watch it uh, at any point of time, in, in time The questions come, uh, why bother tune in uh, at the selected uh, scheduler time? And the answer is, surprise, surprise, again, interaction. Attendees want to uh, connect to each other and to the presenters, just as much as presenters want to connect with them. So it seems to be much made in heaven. And now we come to organizers, people who uh, bring it all together. We have established beyond uh, any doubts that people want to interact, and now we need to see how we can best provide uh, possibilities for that. In real life, the presenter will see the audience and feel their reaction during the presentation and answer the questions. Now it's all gone, but instead we can clone the presenter. Having the presentation pre-recorded means that presenter can be in the chat during the presentation, answering questions and discussing. Only the beautiful uh, cold glass of beer would be missing from the experience of the real life and life events that people really like. And uh, then as far as questions and uh, answers are concerned, at least our experience has been that this is the part where it makes sense to make an effort arranging for the live session. During our MariaDB server first in September 2020, we have a combination of uh, pre-planned questions to ask from the presenter and also the most interesting questions from the audience that our host asked. Of course, there is a matter of a good internet connection to consider here. One of the most unforgettable experiences from the first day of our server fest was when we were uh, chatting with the presenter just a few minutes before uh, we were about to go live, and then his internet, internet connection died out. Uh, luckily, there was a possibility for a backup, so our founder, Michael Videnius, was dragged out of the shower, placed in front of the computer, and asked uh, uh, questions uh, straight away, so it was the most spontaneous interview ever with him. So, lesson learned, always have a plan B where the live connection is concerned. But when possible, give it a chance, because nothing makes you feel, frankly, so alive. Having a pre-recorded session gave us, of course, another idea. Why not make this event time zone friendly? So we divided our planet into three parts and named them uh, New York for Americas, Paris for Europe, Middle East and uh, Africa, and Singapore, Beijing uh, for Asia. And we broadcasted our presentation uh, as the times convenient for each area. So each uh, present presentation was broadcasted three times. We realized that uh, since our presenters come from uh, different time zones, it might not be very convenient for them to participate in all three streams. 
But actually, it turned out that uh, with some planning, it's possible to manage to create such a set of schedulers that um, almost everyone could take part uh, of uh, uh, in at least two or three sessions. What we didn't quite count on uh, was the strain it will put on our team. Uh, the first uh, event uh, that we created in this forum format, Marie de Bessero Fest in September 2020, stretched for a whole week, with uh, each stream uh, being five hours long. And so, so there was uh, several days when we began streaming in the morning in Paris and then in the evening, evening in New York. And then uh, next day, suddenly there was a Beijing stream. So it was a huge challenge, primary for our video streaming uh, wizard Alexander Morozov and our host Kai Arner. But they concluded, and we all concluded, that it was worth it, largely based on the reaction from the audience. So let's some look some more at what uh, makes this whole uh, thing ticking. Presenters, of course, because ultimately it's very much about uh, the content and about the presenters. And presenters do love to present. Obviously, the very re reason people submit their papers for your event is that they want to be there. They work hard, they create something they can be proud of, Uh, and they want to share the results with their, uh, of their work with the public, and also they, uh, of course, want to hear back from the public. Feedback, praise, critique, comments, uh, they want to make new contacts, and so on. Sounds like a win-win, but presenters also hate to present. There is a day job, there is a normal life, what we just talked about, kids and so on to take care of. Uh, of course, there is additional stress of coping with uh, uh, COVID situation, and when one uh, finally finds time and peace to work on the recording, Uh, turns out it's very different from what one is used to in real life events. First of all, uh, it turns out that uh, no matter how brilliant you are in your main line of work and how well you know the subject, and no matter how many selfies uh, you took or even TikTok videos, it's not guaranteed that you know how to set, set up video equipment in order to record your presentation. Second, it's one thing to come on stage and deliver your presentation uh, looking into the eyes of the interested audience and then concentrate on discussing with your peers. But it's a completely different thing to uh, first stare into the uh, cold lenses and uh, uh, wondering uh, where to put your hands, what to do with your eyes, where to look, how uh, to discreetly check uh, your slides without uh, looking too obvious. And then there is a shock of uh, watching what you have recorded and coping with the fact uh, that this is how you look and this is how you sound. They, this, uh, this is how many times you stumble and uh, search for words and so on. It can be quite a shock for many people. Uh, I know it was a shock for me, for sure. Uh, the pressure to re-record uh, can be quite overwhelming, and then there is no time to do it, and so on. So it can become, become quite a vicious uh, circle that needs breaking. And that's, again, where organizers come into the pictures. So how can we help as organizers to make a, a recording uh, process as smooth as possible for the presenters? Well, as organizers, uh, you very quickly uh, learn how uh, everything uh, has to be set up. Uh, so uh, the first advice uh, I have is uh, don't assume that everybody knows it. Uh, it might be your uh, main work for the moment, but uh, presenters just don't know this stuff. So it's really important to um, create the kind of instructions that make sense to your uh, presenters. And for that, you need to uh, sit down with uh, whoever takes care of um, Uh, video editing processing, uh, pro process and preparing stream, and uh, learn everything possible about uh, their process of working. Then uh, document it and then turn it into a very short, very clear instructions. And um, bec because many presenters simply don't have time to go into the details, they just want to be told uh, what to do and uh, get on with doing it um, as uh, easily as possible. And then the main load comes on the video editing team to put uh, the whole presentation together and to make it Uh, suitable for the uh, stream. But then, of course, some people do like to uh, know uh, why they need to do things in a certain way. So at least we came up uh, with this process when we first had a short list of instructions, but then also an appendix uh, explaining in, in detail how our uh, streaming process uh, works and uh, uh, why we uh, ask certain, certain things for people. And then once you uh, have shared those instructions uh, with the presenters, uh, I found that it's really helpful to get in touch with each of them personally and make sure that instructions are clear. And we were setting up um, actually a um, messenger group with uh, quite many of the presenters and uh, first uh, uh, encouraging them to record a very uh, short uh, session for us so we could give feedback and then um, uh, going ahead with the main thing. Uh, that really helped. What else to consider? One is uh, arranging for subtitles. 
We all have accents. Yes, even the native speakers have accents. Everyone has, has an accent from the someone else's point of view. And having subtitles make it uh, so much easier to follow the presentation. But uh, what it takes uh, preparing subtitles um, uh, for every single presentation? Well, obviously it takes a lot of work. Our current conclusion is that uh, it would be ideal if presenters uh, could provide a full transcript of their presentation. Uh, and we encourage them to do so, but it's not possible for many people. So, uh, yes, it's a huge effort to make subtitles happen, but we consider it worthwhile because uh, you need to consider that um, YouTube will keep um, uh, recordings of your uh, events forever, or at least as long as you want to. And it means that once you have this work done, uh, a lot of people will be able to take maximum advantage of the uh, great content uh, presenters provide in their presentation. Then there is a, way, um, a matter of uh, keeping uh, everything together. Uh, during our work on the uh, MariaDB Server Fest, my official title inside the company changed from uh, cheerleader to uh, cheerleader and cat herder. Because trying to keep the deadlines and making sure all the presenters follow the rules is uh, akin to trying to keep a litter of kittens in a basket. There is always this one last participant who breaks all the deadlines, who also happen to have a great content and maybe also a very important member of the community. All together, all, all together, and you really somehow want his presentation to be there. And uh, even if he misses all the deadlines, uh, and you uh, nag and plead and uh, threat and beg, at some point there is just not enough time. So what to do? Well, obviously there is no universal solution. But my observation has been that uh, assuming bona fide is, re is really a good idea. Usually people just don't seem to understand the uh, challenge um, uh, video uh, rec video recording um, and um, uh, streaming team uh, faces. So they just think like they would do in a, in a normal life that it's okay to come up with a presentation at last moment and it will all just uh, go smoothly into the internet. But since it's not the case, people need to hear about it. So yes, obviously it's all about the team. I uh, consider us uh, uh, incredibly lucky in uh, MariaDB Foundation to have such great people uh, to work with. Uh, people who are prepared to uh, work uh, very late. We had uh, amazing after way after midnight session during our work on uh, different events. And uh, especially I would like to name uh, Alexander Morozov, who is our video editor and uh, streaming master in St. Petersburg. And uh, we usually call him Tim Morozov. It's only one person, but uh, since early days of our work on the presentations, it was uh, uh, noted by uh, many people that he does work of uh, several. And then all other guys uh, are doing a great, great job. So I'm really happy with what we are having in the foundation. Uh, then, of course, I must thank uh, the presenters for their work. Uh, the first events that we ran in the format um, I just described in 2020 featured 35 presentations by 30 presenters. Uh, and we ran uh, each of them uh, uh, three times with the different time zones. So it was a lot of work, of course, for our fantastic presenters as well. And uh, having great content and dedicated people uh, around that, what makes uh, this whole uh, event uh, worthwhile. Uh, so uh, after organizing this big big event in September, we went went almost straight away into a smaller MariaDB server mini fest uh, just a couple of months later, and now we are planning to go on um, every few months uh, these uh, server fests or mini fests uh, in 2021, because there is so much great content to share with busy people and so many great presenters to work with. And obviously, thank you to our audience. Our first online event in September 2020 was such a great success. As I said previously, we have only experienced organizing small physical events for 50 or so participants. So watching our events unfold in front of our eyes uh, on YouTube and seeing numbers like 10,000 unique views and then even more views after, it felt absolutely amazing. And it uh, was particularly awesome uh, to get feedback from the people, especially when uh, something that we envisioned as what people might like like, for instance, subtitles, and then hearing lots and lots of positive uh, comments exactly about that. That felt really, really good and gave us motivation to continue. And this is all I would like to uh, share with you today, so please ask me questions now.